the broker owns, or rather has, that's Rents. their own, it, they yeah. rent that physical service theirs. Versus cloud, which again, if you had to go into one of Microsoft or Amazon's uh, cloud environments, you'd see the same thing. Of course. That, but, that, yeah. yeah. But that, you're not looking at one specific server that you're renting. It's you're everywhere yeah. on, on this environment. So let's speak about that. The broker, why would a broker choose the, a dedicated versus a cloud or the other way yes. around? And the benefits and, yeah, let's talk so, about that. So uh, from, a bro- from a broker's perspective, if we check the, uh, if we talk about the, the infrastructure topology that they need to decide wh- when they start up is that um, whatever they choose, they need to think about redundancy. So um, a dedicated server in terms of performance, uh, resources allocation and security, it's a much more preferred option without meaning that they lose redundancy versus if they were on cloud. They, they can still achieve redundancy with a single dedicated server in various ways, which is a bit too technical. Let's let's leave this uh, for later. Uh, so on that dedicated server, w- what is recommended is that they host their main trading platform. It's where the um, trading platform is installed and it runs. So the benefit is that the, the software, the trading software um, utilizes 100% of the CPU, of the memory, of the disk, activity and no one else is hosted on the same server that, that's the that's the good part now um, nowadays for security purposes and to ensure um, the best latency for traders worldwide it is a common practice that the broker will um, deploy several proxy servers access servers in, in various locations around the world so these servers, because they are they are just used for um, to pass through trades um, from the traders to the main physical trading server, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a physical server. Uh, first of all, for cost optimization, if, if you have twenty five of those, you can utilize virtual or cloud servers, um, and. Um, um, it, it requires much less resources than the physical server that hosts the trading server. So we are talking about, uh, let's say, 4 CPU RAM, uh, 4 CPU, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 50 to 60 gigabyte of storage. <coughs> and imagine you have a lot of those to accommodate um, traders worldwide. Yeah, so those proxy servers are not exactly what you're talking about, and um, uh, I like to explain it uh, and give a different kind of uh, expand on that. So the proxy server is, it doesn't handle everything. It handles the connections of uh, trading terminals that are closest to that proxy or yes. access server. And that access server cannot process an order. It doesn't do that. Uh, but what it can do and uh, where the terminal doesn't need to get information directly from the server, it can get it from the access server, is the history, or for example, the, the chart history. So if uh, somebody opens up a trading terminal and wants to see the history of the euro dollar, you know, it doesn't have, they don't have to wait for their request yes. to be sent to the actual server, which is further away. They can get that information yes. from the access information server. Information from, from the data feed actually. From the data feed, yes. exactly. And that's, so information that is static, they can get from a, the access server. Information that's dynamic, or that's, you know, there's no, the result of it is not, uh, has not been processed yet. Yeah. For example, a new order, you know, from a, for, for a price that is currently being generated, the access server needs to communicate with the actual server. Uh, but what it does efficiently is it it handles the multiple connections um, from multiple trading yeah. uh, terminals into the access server. Kind of filters out uh, all of that, all of those requests, so that the main server is handling 
the important yes, critical tasks. Yes. So it's not act, overloaded with so yes with multiple like, connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the access server it's another it acts like a, almost like a buffer. It says okay, this I can handle myself. For example, you've asked for trading history, here yeah, take it. If it's an order, okay, that I need to kind of batch it. And it takes you, all, all these orders, sends it to the server, gets it back, gives the request. Yeah. Thank you for watching. If you like that video and you want to watch the full episode, it's available here. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. It helps the channel.